Hey, Vinyl Community, Jeff here again, and it is time. I've got to knock out these last few uh, VC lottery questions. I'm up to 8, 9, and 10, so I'm going to do a couple videos here in a row. Um, but so, yes, let's get into these. You, uh, we've got to the 30th, so these are being posted. I'm going to space them out to post up to the 30th, just so you're not getting tired of me doing all these questions here in a row. But number eight is basically about uh, grails. Define what a grail is. What are some of the grails we own type thing? So now I'll admit, I'm, I've only been back into vinyl collecting since 2017. So we're pushing six years now. Um, so grails for me, I use the term very loosely as records that I really, really want. They're near and dear to my heart, things that I just really want. I can't say I've got any, the holy grail of I need to have a copy of this particular pressing the korean pressing with the bonus track from this band with the misprinted cover anything like that would be cool but i i don't have anything on a list of that kind of thing for me i use the term very loosely when i refer to them in videos i usually say it's a mini grail and what i mean by that is it's just something that i really really want maybe it's not too hard to get maybe it's not something i thought was impossible to get but maybe it's something that is more costly than i probably would buy for you know pay for and so for me to find a copy at a decent price would be like filling a milli a mini grail so a mini grail i really can't off the top of my head think of any grail by proper definition of something that i am just I've got this thing that if I ever acquired it, it would just be a oh, type moment. <laughs> I don't think I have anything that I value that much. So for me, grail is a very loose term. It's a very, it's a term for just something that's near and dear to my heart. So what I've got in my collection now, which are grails, you know, I don't have any super keen stuff. I just have albums that have for some reason or another, nostalgic or meaning to me that I value having. Um, some are pretty just, uh, I don't know. I mean, okay, so I'll, I'll show some. And, and the first two are really, they're brand new, came out last year. But to have a copy of this on vinyl is a grail. To have an original copy of this, yeah, that'd be a grail. But I don't think I could ever afford one of those. And so it's nice to have a reissue. And so I was thrilled last year when the Quiet Right box sets came back out. Because now you have the first, I'm going to just show them real quick. You get the first and second. And so, you know, would it be nice to have an original Japanese version of these on vinyl? Yes, it would. Would I consider that a grill? Yeah, I guess I would. Am I going to go out and fight for it? Pay 500 bucks or so? No, I'm not. So these were are really nice because it's the vinyl reissue, it's the CD, it's a cassette, it's just all kinds of stuff. So to me, these are just, you know, for me, exciting to have, something I would cherish to hang on to. Um, so yeah, it's really nice to have these. I actually um, did not even open these because I turned right around after that and bought uh, additional vinyl copies for a decent price and have been playing those. I just can't decide whether I'm going to keep these as collectors or if I'm going to eventually open them. I'd like to open the CDs, but I still have not done that. So again, these are brand new. They just came out less than a year ago. So I don't know. They're not a grail in the sense. Now they're limited and they're sold out. So they're nice now. In five years, they might be a sought after collector's edition and it'll be nice to have them. And I might say, you know, that's more of a grail. It's something in my collection that has increased in value. Um, but yeah. I guess it would be a grail to get the original copies. That would be, um, but I just don't have that kind of, you know, unction to spend that kind of money. I'm not that kind of a collector. I've seen some collectors that go, you know, go after things that are rare and they pay hefty prices for them. And, and I collect more of the music than I do all the different editions. So the rest of these, literally, there's probably nothing super significant there's nothing super rare about these it's really all for me about nostalgia and what they mean to me so that's really all i was looking through my collection i'm thinking these are albums that jump out as meaning something to me so here's one that i bet you 75 percent people have no clue what it is archangel this is a uh, aor band i discovered them in the 80s 
uh, they were, I went to a record store and they were playing over overhead. The singer is Jeff Kanata. He's done quite a, there's, there's another Archangel album that he did later on. He's done a bunch of stuff under, under Kanata. Just an amazing melodic voice. I mean, it's a very melodic rock album, hard rock. Now, what's significant about this? I heard on the radio, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful album. It's got some beautiful lyrics, very love song type stuff. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a rocky edge. But back in the 80s, <laughs> when I was wooing my girlfriend at the time, who is my wife now of approaching 37 years next month, um, I used some of these songs on a mixtape. They just, they spoke what I wanted to say. So they, 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 they spoke my words, you know, on a mixtape to, to her when we were separated for a while. So this is just, there's so many songs on here that back in the day really connected with me that I fell in love with their love type songs. And I just love this album. So about mm, two years ago, when I ran across this at a second and Charles, I was just, I was shocked. I found it for like, I don't know, I forget how much it was, less than 10 bucks, five, six, seven dollars. And I'm just like, and it was in great condition. And I just was floored because I just, it's not an album you see a lot. It's, you know, I'm sure it's not super rare, but you just, I've never seen it in a while. I found it. Anyway, so to me, it's very nostalgic. It's very uh, much a part of my heart. These next two, same thing. Again, not super rare, probably. And believe it or not, this one's also called Archangel with the K. Christian psych rock from the like 1980, late 70s, early 80s. So back in the day, in the 80s, uh, in mid 80s, I discovered this band. The album was kind of hard to find. It was later in the 90s pressed on very limited CD, and I was able to score that. So to me, the CD was a grail because to get this album on CD was near impossible for the longest time and then they finally did it there were all these rumors there's a lot of different this one and the next i'm gonna show the boat they're both connected to me kemper crabs the vigil same guy singer same singer this is very much a a a, a worship type album medieval worship as you can tell from the cover lots of weird instrumentations instruments from like medieval times the story behind it was and i don't know how true it is i should ask him i'm a I'm facebook friends with kemper his birthday is the same day as mine um but i grew up in the 80s loving these albums but the there's a lot of weird instruments on here and my the story i heard was he borrowed a lot of these ancient uh instruments from some museum or something in order to make this album he borrowed some and then, and then remember, that may just be a folklore i don't know like i said i should ask um, this has kind of a sort of a medieval flair, but this is definitely, you know, uh, psych rock with distorted guitars and uh, all kinds of, you know, guitar leads and stuff. Very, very cool. But to me, these were connected at the hip because it's the same singer. Um, and so back in the day, these were just so much a point of part of my life that I listened to them all the time. And like I said, then later when I could get my hands on a CD copy, it was just like, wow. So, when I first got back into buying vinyl records again, I immediately went to eBay and scored both of these. And again, they were both under $20, I think, with shipping. Not rare, but to me, very, very uh, a must-have for me. And so, they're just you know significant in the sense of, I just love these albums. And I don't think they've ever been reissued. I mean, they had, like I said, they had a couple, a CD reissue back in the day and that was about it the records have never been reissued i don't think they've been reissued since that on cd um so anyway absolutely love those um this next one again nothing super rare about it but it's the fact that i've got three copies of this album this is striper gel and black attack so back in 1984 i discovered striper with this album this is the original press it's on black it's miscropped it's got the hand is cut off. The rockets are cut off. I didn't know that about this album at the store. Listened to it for years. This is the original album I bought by Striper 1984. This is my original copy from the early days of my vinyl collecting. This is it. Now, jump forward all these years. And in the past 10 years, probably in the past, maybe even since I started buying records again, six years or so, I picked up this copy again, miscropped. Wrong, the wrong crop, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. Um, but, you know, this one is on yellow vinyl. 
Now, back in the day, I did not realize there was a yellow vinyl. I knew there was black. I bought black. That was the one I had that was also yellow. So when it first came out, it was released on black and yellow. Makes sense, striper. Black and yellow vinyl. I never knew that there was what's there. So I bought this. So th to me, that is really cool that I had both of them. Now, they realized the cropping issue, and shortly thereafter, I think the same year, they reissued the album with the proper cropping. So you can see the whole hand. You can see all the letters on the rockets, unlike the original where they were miscropped. So they reissued this. So at some point in the past few years, and this is just on black, there was only a black edition of this. And so at some point I picked up one of these. So to me, they're significant because that's the first Striper album. It's the first Christian rock album I ever bought, 1984. It's what started it for me. Um, I had been to, I'd heard of Christian rock before that. I'd listened to res band, bands like that. But that was when I personally bought it and got into it. So it's very nostalgic, very significant to me and the fact that that record is from when i got my records and i stopped collecting records in the mid late 80s switched over to cds and sold all my all of my vinyl records i kept about 10 or 15 because they weren't on cd and i'm like well i want to keep these striper was one of them and a handful of other ones i still have some of those albums because they just continue to go with me uh, I just never got rid of them. And then when I started buying records again, I'm like, oh, look. And I went out and pulled those out. I had like 10 records. And uh, I still have those records. So this one, I hopefully, doesn't cause any problems for anybody. I mean, it is what it is. This is 1978. I was 12 years old. My cousin, who I grew up with, same age as me. He's about a month younger than me. Um, we were joined at the hip. We did everything together. Just everything. And his older brother was into, well, my older brother too. They were, our older brothers were into, you know, rock, classic rock and stuff. And so we learned a lot from our brothers. We would go into their room and take their records. His older brother was into stuff like uh, Sticks, And he actually is the one that we first heard the band Accept from. He had that song SOB and me and my cousin who were teen, teens uh, used to, well, by that point we learned that we were probably a little older than back in here but you know we used to laugh at that because it was very vulgar if you know the song sob um it's been edited and nowadays you find copies that are all the words are all edited but i just remember all the things we learned and listened to and and one thing that my cousin's brother had was comedy records now he's the one that we first heard robin williams record from and found out robin williams is not mork from work robin williams is a vulgar man and you know we didn't listen as much but there was a lot of comedy type records um that my cousin's brother listened to and this was one of them and that we had and i bought one as a kid and this is the copy i've had since a kid and i've kept it all along i still love this album regardless of the controversy now, and that's a Bill Cosby album. This is the only Bill Cosby album I've ever owned. Still own it from being a, from a kid. And I have never seen this album in the wild. I have run across so many Bill Cosby albums in the wild and all over the place. I've never seen this one. I don't know why. Is it rare? I don't know. But this is the one that my cousin and I knew backwards and forwards and we could recite and tell the jokes from backwards and forwards. And still, it's the only album to this day that I own. I've owned it since back then. Uh, it's, this is my original copy. It's still in decent condition considering how much we used to wear it out. Um, the, the edge is kind of chewed up because I've had it for so long. But it's just <laughs> rolling in the roll, roll, roller coaster. Yeah, um, it's the only one that I'm super familiar with. Uh, you know, aside from the Bill Cosby, myself, or whatever, that TV show that we used to quote all the time, the, the, the TV episode. So that album is just very significant. So to me, those are in my, they're, they're cherished possessions in my record collection. Grails, to me, they're cherished records, but they're probably not significant as far as value or limited pressing or whatever they are just very significant to me so that's for mine i don't have any like i said i don't have a list i just whatever i find i find it if it's like oh i've always wanted a copy of that great but i haven't uh, i don't have anything that i'm out there searching for i want a copy of this pressing of this so uh, yeah grails to me are very just albums i love that i really am glad to have and i call them mini grills and that's it for this one though i'm going to move on <laughs> thanks for me rambling on so long i will see you next time rock on and rock hard <laughs>